The Dusk 19 is finally here. Shooting impressions. We've got absolute cold shots, first impressions, first shots through the gun. We'll do the multi-mag test to see which magazines it likes and doesn't like since it takes Glock 19 magazines. Our trademark what's for dinner test to see what it eats. Take it over to the spinner for sights and trigger control. Do some practical accuracy and then give you concluding thoughts. Coming up next on GB Guns. This will be a slightly different warm up shot. My 2x4, which is out there about 20, 25 yards, quit on me. Happens when you shoot them sometimes. So I'm going to try to hit the spinner from this distance, little six inch target for my warm up shots with the Dusk 19. We're using the Glock Factory mag that was included and Winchester White Box 115 grain. No guarantees all make hits, but we'll see. Failure to fire on that one. Still have a round in the chamber. Well, I didn't hit anything. What's really sad is uh, it's actually the second time I tried to film that. First time I did it, I forgot to turn the target camera on. And believe it or not, hit first shot, and then probably four out of ten, it was going really great. And I looked down and realized I didn't film it. Doesn't matter. Point being, my initial feelings on this pistol. This is probably the most ergonomic compact pistol that I've shot. That's a pretty big statement. Previous King had been the Walther P99, uh, but my thumb was slipping on the little thumb rest, but at least it has one. But this radius that they did on the back of the tang, so comfortable. That was, uh, shockingly pleasant to shoot <laughs> normally i don't like these small guns but um that went pretty darn well next uh let's test some mag compatibility and do the multi-mag test that failure to fire appears to have been a light primer strike that could just be break-in that could be shipping grease who knows gotta shoot more to find out so for the multi-mag test, since this is a Glock 19 pattern gun, we're gonna run Glock pattern magazines. We've got eight different types here, starting off with Pro Mag. Remember, friends don't let your friends use Pro Mag. Three rounds, just wanna see if it runs and locks open. Yes, and it drops free. Yagaman. Yes, and it drops free. AC Unity out of Bosnia. Make sure I'm still on frame. There we go. Yes, and it drops free. Bull Armory. Yes, and it drops free. Just got my first little kiss of slide bite there. I was a little sloppy in my form that time. ETS. Drops free. That catch was just the meat of my palm, which tends to happen. This one is an XTAR USA. Yes, and drops free. Magpul. We had a feed issue that is magazine related. Not the best mag, but it fits, if that's what you've got. And an ulti mag. <laughs> I have yet to see a gun that the ulti mag drops free from. But <laughs> there you have it. Aside from the P mag, it seems that all of these mags worked fine. Now we'll see what the gun eats in What's For Dinner. Thanks to our patrons and Ammo Squared supporters, it's everyone's favorite time, what's for dinner time. As I move past these, you'll see that we go from 65 grain up to 158 grain today. Each round having a different bullet profile, we've got different case materials, the O-Jives in different locations, 
uh, different projectile types. Quite a wide variety here. The objective is to see what does the gun eat. Will it feed from slide lock, chamber another round of the same type, and will it lock open on empty? The third round's there to reduce variables. This is not a magazine test, it's a test of compatibility between the ammo and the gun. So it not working is not a fail of one or the other, merely the combination thereof. If you guys are curious about trying any of this stuff in your own gun, check out the link to the article over on gbgunsdepot.com. We link to the stuff where we can find it. Keep in mind, we've had some of this for quite some time. If I didn't mention it earlier, sorry about the moody shadows. Had to come out here at 8 a.m. because it's gonna be a hot day today. And if I wanna get this stuff done, gotta do it when I can. We have day jobs. <laughs> so, uh, got the target camera set up. We are seven yards away. Each of those circles is about two inches. I have removed the PMAG from the pile of mags, but the rest of the What's For Dinner has been loaded into those various mags. If we have an issue, we will stop and use the Glock mag and see if that fixes things. But it all should work. First load is the 65 grain ARX Inceptor. Very lightweight load. Check for frame. All right. No cycling issues. The uh, recoil in that was a little pronounced, but nothing unbearable. Another 65 grainer, this one at 1,700 feet per second, is the Liberty Civil Trainer. This is a lead-free, non-toxic, uh, ultralight recoil load. And this is in the Pro Mag, circle number two. Oh, that is softer. Don't know what happened with that third shot there. It's probably me. Third load is Fiogi 100 grain. This is a frangible. Don't see this stuff around very much. It's kind of a specialty use load. And this is in the Ultimag, which loves to stay in guns for circle number three. For all you Glock files out there, yes, those shots were low left. <laughs> Number four, Fort Scott Munitions, 115 grain tumble upon impact. These are the turned copper little diamonds, pyramids, if you will, in the ETS mag. Definitely a different recoil impulse. it kind of builds also hit a little low which is interesting circle number five blazer aluminum 115 grain we use aluminum steel case ammunition because you guys use it because it's cheap it's cheaper to make so it's cheaper to sell however the uh, material has more friction round to round inside the magazine more friction going into and coming out of the chamber and the expansion and contraction rates are a little bit different on steel and aluminum than they are on brass so some guns choke on it See how it does in circle number five. It's interesting that I keep consistently hitting a little bit low because I'm lining the sights up um, dead center in the middle of the target. Could be me. Circle six, Wolf, 115 grain steel case. I don't think we're going to see a lot of this for a while. Very soft. Man, this gun is very comfortable to shoot. It's uh, really impressive. Circle 7, Remington UMC Leadless, 124 grain. This is a snub-nosed with exposed lead. I guess that's the part that's less. Did they cut the end off? I don't know. In the Yagaman magazine. T 
did not feed. Appears that the magazine wasn't seated all the way. And now I've just gone done did it and almost induced a double feed. That was my error, not the guns or the magazines or the ammo. That stuff is just silly soft to shoot. That's fun. Circle number eight, Federal 138 grain. This is the synthetic jacketed hollow point. It's blue. And yes, I realize I'm backlit here. Sorry, I can't rotate the sun and I can't rotate the range. Yet. Shot nice. Still airing a little low, a little left. I tend to air a little bit left, just as a personal shooting error. Why? I don't know, it could be squeezing my right hand. That's what I usually attribute to when I'm shooting smaller guns. Could be poor finger placement, could be a number of things. The, uh, those little chart target things are somewhat helpful, but not absolute. There's lots of reasons why people have errors. Circle number eight is the Federal Syntec Action Pistol 150 grain. This is uh, the red synthetic jacket, stub nosed. Oh, just realized that we had around not eject from that Federal. It's still stuck on the extractor. I don't think I've ever seen that before. There we go, now it's clear. It's probably one of those one in a million shooting errors. And now you can see why the gamers use this stuff. It's really soft. Very comfortable to shoot. Also hit point of aim and grouped really well. And our last load is the PPU subsonic 158 grain. So top off this magazine. That 158 grain is obviously meant for subguns, suppressor use, and things like that. Not for general handgun use, but it's heavy. And so we use it once for dinner, plus it tends to be soft. Looks like I'm getting familiar with this pistol based on the target, uh, which is great because next we have sights and trigger control over on the spinner target. Now 13 yards away from our six inch Titan Grid Outdoors spinner target, use this target for sights and trigger control because, well, as I, it's small <laughs> and as I hit it, it starts to move. The more and better I hit it, the faster it moves and the more important timing a well-placed shot becomes if I wanna keep that momentum going and get it to flip over the top. Not as easy as it looks sometimes. Got Winchester 115 grain. I'm standing next to the camera. Eight rounds, give me a chance. Though I got it over the top and hit it, it was not my best run. There were two factors that for me made that challenging, would require me to spend more time with this pistol to get really good at that. One is because these are lower thirds co-witness height sights, as we saw on the what's for dinner section, uh, point of impact is lower than point of aim. Just slightly, but it's there. Amplify that over distance and you start to have issues. So I found myself having to aim unnaturally high on that, uh, aiming part way up the white to hit the red. The other part was this trigger, which is very nice, as you guys saw in the tabletop, has a good clean break and a definitive Glock-esque reset, as you'd expect, it is a little bit longer than what I'm accustomed to in shooting. Um, that's a downfall of being a hammer-fired guy, I'm used to triggers that strikers really can't mimic. 
So I would need to spend more time with this learning that impulse. I did not get the full mag plus one test on this for two reasons. One, my two by four quit and the steel fell over. And the other is it only comes with one magazine. On that note, I've heard some people complain that it's only coming with one magazine, but as you saw from our multi-mag test, there is a plethora of aftermarket Glock compatible magazines out there available for a wide range of prices. It's easy enough to pick one up. Is it a bummer it only comes with one? Yes. But if they want to include two Glock factory mags buying manufacturer to manufacturer, the price tag would have to go up quite a bit more than what you would pay for an aftermarket Glock magazine on your own when you go to the gun store anyways to pick up the thing. Pretty, pretty simple there. So, um, these sights are that high for the purpose of being able to co-witness with a red dot, which is all the rage. I get that. If you're a red dot user, that's going to be great. If you are not, like I am, or if you run guns as they come out of the box, as we do here on the channel to keep the reviews fair, prevent any third-party parts from interfering with results, um, you're going to just have to learn a different point of aim. Uh, or change sights. I love night vision sights. They are my favorite. They're what's on our bed stand gun um, for reasons, but they're just a little bit high for me. Maybe we'll come back out another time with a dot on it where that really won't matter so much because then we're following the dot. Anyways, let's see how we do on practical accuracy. Practical accuracy is a chance to conclude my thoughts, draw some final feels for the pistol. Also a chance to see how well I can shoot it. We've got uh, one inch square at seven yards, that black square that the target camera is zooming in on. And I've got five rounds of that Winchester white box. Thanks again to our ammo squared supporters. You guys are the ones that have helped us get our hands on some ammo to keep this channel going. All right, I'm gonna aim dead center. Now we use this target because a one inch square tends to be the same width of a front sight post at seven yards which allows for a very precise sight alignment. And as you can see, still hitting a little bit low. Concluding thoughts on the Dusk 19. Out of the box, it smashes <laughs> a lot of the competition with features, fits. The ergonomics on it, for me, are just spectacular. Maybe a little small in the grip, but I wear double XL gloves. So for everyone with hands smaller than that, it's probably gonna be darn near perfect. I'm still very much in love with that radius cut on the back of the beaver tail. It reminds me a lot of the Walther uh, Q4 steel frame, which if you didn't know is actually a different frame than what's on the Q5 steel frame. Fits really nicely. This undercut under the trigger guard is very comfortable. The gun just, it feels good to shoot. It's a very comfortable shooter. I had some hesitations, challenges, I guess you could say with the trigger. It being a Glock system, there are limitations to the trigger. At the same time, I don't fault them for putting a trigger in here that is more uh, carry weight appropriate since it is designed to be a carry gun. It comes with night sights after all. Um, for a carry gun, I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Um, nice weight, handsome looking, feels great in the hand. Didn't have any reliability issues. We did have one case stick under the extractor on an empty mag. I don't know what the cause of that was. We also had a couple light primer strikes earlier on that could be break in. That could also be the fact that we do worst case scenario testing. And that is that we run the guns right out of the box. Didn't clean any of the factory grease out of there, which could easily cause issues like that. I strongly recommend that you give guns a thorough cleaning before shooting them. The reason why we run them out of the box is because that's a worst case consumer, consumer experience. And we want to cover that and experience that and see if it'll make a difference. So it might have on this gun, but overall very impressive. I think the, uh, the Glock Clone Wars, as a lot of people call it, 
are over. <laughs> this is not a clone, this is an advancement, much like some of the others that we featured on the channel. And it's really uh, fascinating and fun to see where companies are taking a design that basically got neglected for 30 years and really bring it in, not only into the 21st century, but uh, bring it, in this case, into 2023. This is a very modern pistol that I I really like. I'm, I'm shocked. I have admit some anti-Glock bias and that the platform itself, although a good and reliable one, is not my favorite, but this just feels really good. Uh, with hope and hopefully enough harassing comments from you guys, we can get Tia out to try this because I think she would really enjoy this. And uh, it's not too big for a woman's carry gun either. Good job, Lone Wolf. This is, this is certainly impressive. Thanks for watching.